Coach, I haven't talked to you since we left the field when, when we are both in the USFL. I was with the Birmingham Stallions, and you were with the uh, Houston Gamblers. Coach, always a pleasure. Jack well, Party, how are you, man? Well, I'm doing good. Just, uh, you know, they've, uh, uh, this, this time of year is always exciting. With all the football starting. I have a lot of friends in the game. I try to keep up with it. There you go. Uh, down in Texas, Coach, uh, what, what are you uh, living in uh, what part? Well, kind of. Kind of the east side of central Texas, uh, uh, between where Texas A&M is a college station and, okay. and Baylor's at Waco. We're about halfway in between them, so this, uh, you know, there's a lot of whatever that conference is called. Now they, they've all <laughs> changed names. I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> what, what's going on? Hey, uh, we, uh, uh, my partner David Spada here was uh, pulling some information. Uh, it says you're a rancher now. Is that uh, is that the, the the term that we should use now? Coach Party is now a rancher. Well, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, I, 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 I raise grass. <laughs> <laughs> Out on the prairie, huh? I had a bunch of old cows I try to keep in there. They always want to go over the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> is there a lot of cattle rustling going on down there in Texas, though? <laughs> well, not that, but it's hard to get. It, it, uh, they're, they're a lot like a uh, lot of those football players. Wherever they are, they want to be on the other side of the fence. <laughs> <laughs> it's always greener on the other side, right, Coach? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see you coach with the Bears from 75 to 77. I was like 5'6". I don't remember those teams. I started watching them in 79. But, I mean, when you start a coach and you walk in and your first-round pick that year is Walter Payton, it would be a dream come true for you. Well, it was. Well, you know, we've... Uh, you know, uh, took the job. We went to all the All Star games. Of course, he came out of you know a little bit of college. I didn't have a uh, you know back in those days. Uh, uh, you know, the integration had started, but it you know there was uh, there's there still a lot of the small black schools that had good football, but it was hard, a little bit hard to evaluate them because you know mm-hmm. you didn't know what you were getting, but. Seeing him at the at the Senior Bowl, I mean, it took about two minutes to decide to you know, and we we were going to have, I think it's the third choice, uh, you know, that we were up third. Yeah, I think it was and, fourth. Uh, we yeah, were, we were hoping. I, I had my fingers crossed the whole time that that uh, he'd fall uh, in your lap. That, yeah. that well, that he would still be there when we drafted third, and uh, you know, there's a couple quarterbacks went before he did, but that's right. it. Right. Yeah, that that's, uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, the legendary and, and uh, what we did from there and so forth. But, you know, you take you take a look at the, your coaching career. I mean, talk about a Mitch Pop chair. You know, you start out with the World League and then you, then you then you go to the Bears and then you go to the Houston Gamblers, the USFL. Then you go back to the NCAA. Then you go back to the NFL, then to the CFL. Then you return back to coaching. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, you know, alive. What I tell people, and you know, I played uh, 15 years pro ball. Besides that, so right. Hey, I never had to grow up. I've just I've been <laughs> playing my whole life. I never had to get a real job. I, I love it, Coach. You know, uh, and you know, one of the, one of those uh, you know made for TV movies with uh, Bear Bryant and uh, you know the Junction Boys, as they called you back in 1954, when you guys tell. Tell us a little bit about, was it, I mean, that movie was just awesome in my eyes because, you know, being a football player and seeing what you guys had to do, but they told me, and just rumor had it, that you were the toughest son of a gun, tougher than four rattlesnakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were, that, that camp was at Junction, Texas, the reason they called it Junction Boys. Yep. And that's about all was out there, some rocks and rattlesnakes. <laughs> so, you know, Coach Bryant took a, you know, he had, he had just come to A&M from the right. uh, University of Kentucky. And, you know, A&M had not won any games to speak of in a, in a bunch of years. And he wanted to, you know, back in those days, there was no limit to the number of players you could sign or have on your team. Mm-hmm. So actually, there was about 110 of us went out there. And he wanted to find out who could, uh, you know, who, who was going to be, be tough enough to, Take the heat and, uh, and 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 whatever, and not mm-hmm. quit, not mm-hmm. uh, not give in to it. And ten days later, we just had thirty three of us left. Wow! And that was the worst team Coach Bryant ever had. <laughs> uh, that year, uh, we were. Uh, I, 
I think we won one game out of out of ten. So you know, hmm. we lost nine games, and that, you know, Coach Brown that, that never happened to him before. But the big thing about that, and and what made the Junction Boys, uh, you know, a little bit unique um, in a in a three year time, a team that couldn't beat anybody, we were undefeated three years later. So you know that that's the turnaround when when you take a coaching job. You're probably not getting one that's a great job, or they wouldn't be hiring a new coach. True. And you know, take, taking a job and and having been able to 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 make a winning team out of it, and that's of course what Coach Bryant did, and not only a winning team but a good team. Of course, he did the same thing. If he didn't go many places, just really Kentucky, A and M, and then Alabama. He mm-hmm. that's where he's from, and that's where he finished up. Yeah. You know, that's incredible. You start with over a hundred college kids. You know, these kids are 18, 19, 20 years old. And, uh, and of course, Bear Bryant at, you know, in his early stages, he had to be a, a tough hombre, of course. Wow. That, that, that had to be, that had to be an experience, something, something you'll never forget. But, you know, coach, I'm going to take you back here a little bit, back to the 1977 season. And a lot of people said your best coaching move that you ever made. You know what, you know what that was? I'm going to test your memory here now a little bit. <laughs> well, I, go you. I, uh, I, I have to figure out where it was in seventy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let me let me just fill you in here. Nineteen seventy seven. We're we're last game of the year. We had to win the game against the Giants in the snow. We had about five inches of snow on the ground. Oh, okay. Peyton, Peyton wasn't moving worth a damn. So I'm on the sidelines. I'm I kept getting closer and closer to you. And I go, you see that other thirty nine over there, Larry Zonka? It's time number thirty nine got in the game. <laughs> <laughs> so you gave me a shot, Coach. You gave me a shot to get back in the game, and and uh, I have a picture of uh, of me sliding across the end line on on that touchdown. And then unfortunately, our kicker Bob Thomas missed the extra point, and then we had to go in overtime. But that was probably uh, a hey, game a that game. yeah. Hey, you know, starting out that game, do you remember? Uh, I mean, it was uh, it was sunny, and there, you know, there's. Uh, the, yeah, the field was completely clear, and there was by the fourth quarter the, or overtime. I mean, there was ten inches. Of I know. The field. Yeah, because well, actually, the snow started coming down uh, halfway through the first quarter, and then remember in the locker room, we all go inside, and, and I don't know uh, what what Hallis and the McCaskies did, but they went out and got all of the all of the, the shoes at some uh, sporting goods store, so we all could put cleats on. I know. <laughs> They did. They made a you know quick run, of, and I don't know how they got that done. I, and truthfully, I don't know what when you're in snow like that. I don't know what different shoes <laughs> whether it makes any difference or not. But it uh, you know the, you know keep you know remember that we couldn't see the hash marks. Couldn't see lines, nothing. The, right. Sideline markers. I mean, it was a. a I was in the game a long time, but that was the only one I ever like. <laughs> well, all I remember is uh, the time is uh, ticking down. We're down to, what, inside of a minute over time. And, of course, if it would have ended, it would have been a tie and we wouldn't have made the playoffs. But I'll never forget when we broke the huddle for that uh, field goal. And then Bob Parsons turned to uh, turned to Bob Thomas. He says, hey, you missed this. We're going to break your freaking neck. You didn't say the freaking part. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't miss the signals, boy. That that was something else too. You know that we got pretty excited about it. Remember when we got back to the airport there at O'Hare? There's about ten thousand oh, people Lee, waiting for us. Been, what forty thousand people? Yeah, you know, we couldn't even. Uh, you know the the airport traffic, the cars getting to and from the airport. Uh, I mean, it was uh, what an amazing deal. Yeah, you know the we were well, late. That was a big thing. You yeah, know, Chicago hadn't won in. You know, so long, and it's such a great sports town, and, right. and you know, bear town. You bet. But, uh, it just, uh, it, it was amazing the, the the way they took to the to the Chicago Bears and finally winning a few games. Coach, yeah, that was great. Was it your decision to put Robin at fullback to block for Peyton when he ran for those two hundred seventy five yards that game? Well, I was a fullback anyway, though, Dave. I was drafted as a fullback and then got changed to tight end, but. I, I, you know, I was, I was kind of fortunate. You know, I had, there was a couple of injuries. Roland got, uh, had a knee and I was able to step in and, and play, you know? Well, there's a you know, great part about that team. To me, it was, uh, you know, being so unselfish. Everybody, uh, 
doing what they could, filling in. Of course, uh, you know, with Walter Payton, he was going to get the ball most <laughs> nearly every down anyway, and just trying to figure out how would how would get to him a little bit different. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, and then but you know the offensive line that group put together it was a uh, kind of amazing group who were part USFLers or W yep. whatever they were yeah W F U yeah W F Canadian yeah. leaguers and, <laughs> and one or two real low. Yeah, you know, you know, you take Reevy Sori and Noah Jackson and Dan Neal, and of course Ted Albrecht was a first round draft choice, seventy seven. He was on, you know, he was a high high draft choice in that whole. Thing. Right, and on the left side was, uh, uh, Lionel oh, D- uh, Dennis Dennis Lick. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What did Dan Jiggets do? <laughs> that, that's that's kind of a running joke in, in Chicago, Coach. <laughs> coach, so you left after the 77 season. Sid Gilman was there for one year and left. Was there a reason both of you guys left? Oh, you know, looking, looking back uh, is, is definitely a mistake on my part. Uh, uh, you know, in, in Chicago... Uh, it was, uh, I, you know, we had, we had such a good team. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they were, they weren't, really none of the guys were making any money. I was afraid we were going to lose them all, to tell you the truth. And, uh, the Washington Redskins, George Allen left there. And, of course, I'd been to Redskins. And, uh, you know, they, you know, uh, keeping players or spending money wasn't a problem with them. So, that was the reason I made that decision to go there. But they didn't have any draft choices or anything either. So it, it was uh, it, it certainly one of my career moves that, uh, that that I probably shouldn't have made. Did Hallis try to keep you and say, here, here's more money, or he just said go? No. Uh, see, Jim Finks really was running everything at that point. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you, know, uh, you, you know, Jim, he wasn't going to spend much. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Oh my goodness! His son runs the Bears yeah. youth camps now and doesn't spend much. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I direct four <laughs> weeks of his camps, coach. So I'm I'm a I'm a, a bear witness to that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, coach! But, you had yeah. some great quarterbacks. You had Joe Theismann. You had Warren Moon. You had in the USFL. You had what Jim, Jim Kelly. Kelly. And yeah. with the Bears, you had Bob Avellini. <laughs> Well, and then later on, the University of Houston, I had uh, Andre Ware won the Heisman Trophy. That's right. That's right. And uh, David Klingler, who was also a first-round draft choice. So, hey, Bob had some good quarterbacks. Boy, you sure have. And you know. Bellini, uh, yeah. Hey, he did. He did what uh, you know what what we wanted him to, and he had the discipline uh, to do it right. And there again, you know, a lot of quarterbacks they they're not really content handing the ball off sixty times a game. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, Bob, uh, of course, uh, stayed in the area, and I'm, a, you know, played a lot of golf with Bob. But we we always give him the ribbon, you know. His his nickname is Slow Mo Bob. We all knew that. But we had the shortest, you know, we had the smallest playbook, uh, uh, you know, in the NFL. Coach, you know, Walter left, Walter right, Walter up the middle. That was about it, <laughs> you know. And and but you know, along with that, then a, a play action pass off the same action. Right and, there, and you go. These numbers. Uh, you know, with completions and and touchdowns per catch, uh, I mean they were they they were some of the highest ever in the, in the NFL. Yeah, they yeah, were pretty high on the ratio. Yeah, but there again, yeah, we just didn't do it much. Yeah, <laughs> coach, how good was Sid Gilman as a coach? Robin said that Sid Gilman told him, "Don't ever let the Bears move you from fullback to tight end." And a year later, two years later, they moved him. Was that guy that smart of a football mind? Yes, um, the reason I hired Sid was he was uh, he had, he'd been my my coach uh, with Rams my rookie year. Okay. And actually, my first two or three years, uh, he was out there before he before he left there. I actually got fired there, and they, you know, the Rams in those days were really struggling, and they changed coaches every year. But I was uh, I, I was around Sid long enough to know that he was uh, as far as the the meetings of, of, of 
uh, explaining a, a play and getting the right blocking scheme and knowing how to handle every blocking scheme. Mm-hmm. George, I mean, uh, uh, since Said. before, the best offensive coach I was ever around. I mean, we were... Uh, of uh, you know, his terminology, a lot of people said well, it was too complicated, but uh, you know it, it was maybe a little complicated. But uh, you know, at that point, we just and he wasn't real happy with with me either than Chicago because he wanted to do a little more than run the ball. Right. Yeah. But I, I knew what it was going to take to win, so we ran the ball mm-hmm. and played and played tough defense. You know, I I, I love Sid. You know, as a rookie, uh, my first offensive coordinator. You know. Um, I'm a, I'm a kind of a, I don't know. I study the game. I love it. I've got kids that play, uh, uh, Jack. I got one in college and I've got a, a son who's a senior in high school right now. Is, uh, be a, he's a D1 prospect. So, Good. you know, it's just so, you know, as a father, so much fun to, you know, I, I, oh, yeah. I, I tape the films and, you know, I'll be, you know, I'm, I'm, I get to the first, first parent there on, on, on Friday night and I get my 50 yard line seat so I can film well. <laughs> But I like taking I like taking uh, uh, the film back and and then my son and I will sit down for a couple hours we'll review the film and study it and get ready for next week. But uh, but that's why Sid was you know. Well, when you, know, you were you were in those meetings with Sid, I mean that's um, they're they're one I've never been around a coach and you talk about having every play broken down. Oh, I'm, it, yeah, it was it, unbelievable. I mean, yeah, I mean the, your 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 exact stance, your first step, your. Punch your head location. I mean, it, it all better be right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, he, he, you know, Sid was a was was a technician, man. You know, and and you know, it's all about technique, and and oh, yeah. you know, and every position played out there is about technique. And and boy, have I, you know, I, you know, my last two sons uh, are quarterbacks. <clears throat> now I can't coach the quarterback position because I didn't play it, and I don't have, you know, I I just don't. So I turn it over to the experts and and give them a private. Uh, coaching that uh you know former uh nfl quarterbacks that played in the league uh they take my kids and and they work with them and boy what a what a huge difference that makes you know yeah. but but it's all about the technique all well, about it technique. Is. if you don't have that right to begin with it doesn't matter how much talent or anything else going you're if you're if your foundation isn't there you're not going it's not going to be a good house that's right coach you had some great offensive corners besides gilman you had mouse davis with the run and shoot here in Chicago, we brought Mike Martz in, who is the offensive genius, and he's trying to get these players to learn his system. What do you think of that? Do you think he could do it in one year, or do you think it's too complicated? Oh, it's it's uh, a coach can do it. Can you get the players in one year? That's the problem. Uh, you know, to to change a I think the biggest overrated thing in the world is the uh, the playbook. Mm-hmm. You get the good players. It doesn't matter. I mean, you you still got to be sound on right. Exactly. I mean, you got to do do things that are sound, or you're not going to win. But in the meantime, how do you get the players? And that's what we did in uh, you know in Chicago. What what did we have that first year uh, up there uh, out out of a what thirty or forty two man squad? We had something like thirty four new players. New players. That was in seventy five. So I mean, and, and there again that year we just well, we were seven and seven or whatever mm-hmm. it was, mm-hmm. but it was uh, you know we showed a, a promise turnaround. But I never, uh, well, uh, you know, philosophy, particularly in those days when I was re- trying to rebuild all those teams, uh, I had a little philosophy of, philosophy of my own is why stay pat? You know, talking poker here, why stay pat with a losing hand? Hey, you better you better try to upgrade. If you got losing hand, so well, such reason every week, uh, you know, that first year there, we had we had a different lineup. You know, different. Mm-hmm. If anybody come on waivers, we were picking them up, picking them up, see if they'll fit in. So I mean, and and we, you know, I had no intention of doing that forever, but until we finally had a you know team of the had good enough players that we could uh, uh, line up and improve with, no use that no use of sitting back. Uh, Holding a losing hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, you know, it, it all goes back. Uh, it, I don't give a, a give a heck what the playbook is if you don't have the horses to to, to carry it out. You're not going to win. I no, mean, you got you got to have got to have the athletes. Gotta coach, if you were coach, you, you got to use your athletes right too. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. You know what? In Chicago, you know, the biggest question I get from 
you know, people from Chicago or the players I coached up there because, well, Walter Payton carrying the ball 55 times in one game, and then there a few years later, uh, you know, we might not run five five running plays a game mm -hmm. you know, with the run and shoot. So it's uh, – but later on having Jim Kelly who – and uh, it, it, he wasn't the running back. Paul nope. Walter Payton was running back. So, that, that's right. You know, I've always tried to use the players we had, their, their strength. And, mm -hmm. you know, nobody wants any excuses why you didn't win. So uh, trying to use the players and, you know, making the system fit them. Right. You know, I played under a coach, uh, Jim Owens, uh, oh, out in yeah, Washington. Yeah, I, He's I a, did, too. Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. He, yeah. he was with Brian today and him. That's right. You know, uh, Coach. Uh, what a great guy! Wasn't he something else? I, oh, he was one of my idols. Well, you know, they he passed away uh, about a year and a half ago. They got this yeah. beautiful statue of him out uh, at Husky Stadium. There, I was up for the spring game this uh, last uh, uh, April, <clears throat> and uh, you know, I I just kind of I took some pictures. You know, you just stare at his uh, that big bronze figure. He was a big man. He, he was, was a big man. Big man, and and he was he was my mom. Uh, he'd come knocking on, you know, back then there really wasn't any regulation how many times you could, you know, go see a, a prospect or whatever. But he must have been over to dinner at least ten times, Coach. Oh, yeah. And every time he came over, he'd bring some roses for my mother. And then, and my mom would always say, Coach, you're staying for dinner, aren't you? You know, so she, <laughs> she'd serve up a meal. And, and uh, as soon as Coach Owens would leave, she'd look at me and go, that's the most handsome man I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, uh, you know, back then, of course, you know, Coach Bryant with his uh, winning through the years, and, and that's the kind of coaches he had. That's right, yeah. Well, you know, Jerry Claiborne, you know, he ended up with Maryland and uh -huh. all yeah. the other places. I mean, hey, uh, Coach Bryant cranked out some good, uh, you know, he had some good assistants that turned out to be good head coaches. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you know, it's just, it's it's the coaching tree, and it's, you know, it's so Look at Jakey sure Wasn't he part of the AM, A&M coaching tree? No, he came later. He, he came after Gene Stalling. Or Gene Stalling? He, yeah, he, okay. was, he was at A&M, yeah. Wow. But not not with, uh, well, he played with Coach. He, that's the reason they hired him at A&M, because he, uh, he played under Bryant at Alabama. Mm -hmm. And Stallings was one of the Junction boys, I see. Yes. yes. Wow. You know, Coach, uh, uh, take us back a little bit because I know that you 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 had a little bout with uh, with skin cancer, didn't you? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a form of skin cancer, uh -huh. it's a melanoma. Melanoma. Well, that, uh, that yeah, that's what cost uh, that was Joe Roth uh, when he yep, when he it's passed. Yeah, a very away. dangerous, uh, very fast acting one, and uh, you know, fortunately, uh, you know, for me, I. I uh, you know, age, I can't remember everything anymore, but I'd read about uh, a, a pitcher for the for the uh, Los Angeles Dodgers mm -hmm. that had passed away, and I was reading about him. And I was out there in, in Los Angeles at the time, and, you know, I was in the sports page, and mm -hmm. uh, re reading about him, and he it, it had a mole on his leg that he didn't... Uh, take care of and when they finally took care of it you know he'd be he was a pitcher and he couldn't come off the mound right mm -hmm. and you know his stride and he'd gone from being a good pitcher he couldn't get anybody out hmm. and they're trying to figure out why and you know his stride was different and all that they and watched the films they saw that and why it changed was a mole or you know it's growing uh, was bothered him, and mm -hmm. uh, they, they traced to a mole, and I mean, he was he was dead six months later. Wow! So, and reading about that, the mole on his leg sounded just like the one I had in my arm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my Phyllis, you know, my wife was read the article, you know, right along with me. Mm -hmm. How how old were you at the time? Twenty seven. Well, you're you're right in the middle of your football career. It, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And uh, you know, my wife. Reading that paper over my shoulder and and seeing my arm, you know, because as white as I am, and you know, I never could tan or anything. Mm -hmm. I was just white as a sheet. But I had that black dot on my arm. Mm -hmm. So I mean, she had a with her had me in or to our family doctor that day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness. Yeah. Wow. Coach, you mentioned you coached Jim Kelly. Wasn't Jim Kelly the quarterback who? 
was with the Bills when the Bills came back and beat you guys in that playoff game and they came back from like 40 points down, or was that uh, the backup, Frank Thir- Reich? 34-3, to three, I believe it was, or something. Uh, Kelly was hurt or something, and I forgot, he might have started the game, but uh, you know, that, that, that was even the more bizarre thing about that. Uh, you know, Kelly was out. He wasn't in the game, and we still couldn't stop him. Unbelievable. Yeah, that 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 game I'll never forget because you know I, I you know had a little action with the boys uh, on Houston that day and I'm thinking oh wow I'm up 34 to three at halftime right coach no oh, problem <laughs> and I'm getting three points. <laughs> oh yeah. Wasn't it the game Buddy Ryan got in the offensive coordinator's face Kevin Gilbert I believe it was. Yeah. Yep. That was it. <laughs> wow. Did you break up that fight or what happened? <laughs> oh. I've, I've forgotten. There's just so many weird things going on that day. I've, it, it's been such a nightmare. I've tried to do everything I can to forget it. <laughs> everything about it. I mean, you, hey, uh, uh, there, and there you again, you had to bring it up. All those great things happened. <laughs> that was the worst thing in the world. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I remember you, Coach. You know, and, uh, uh, you know, I only got to play one year with you, but... Uh, you're 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 kind of a you're quiet you're 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 kind of quiet reserved but boy I tell you when you spoke people paid attention you know but it, that that was your style though wasn't it well Just, you yes know? that you know was uh, oh I, you know the kind of way I was raised in my in high school and Coach Bryant you know he didn't uh, he, he, he didn't you know, if he asked him something you 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 better answer him but other than that you don't. He's not made loud mouths around. <laughs> wow, coach, true. could you coach in today's NFL with some of these players the way they act today? Well, I, you know, there's a you know through the years there, there's been all kinds of you know I've, I've had a lot of players that uh, uh, you know when I've taken a job well, the, with with the Houston Oilers when I took that job that bunch of receivers they had were notorious for being. Uh, well, kind of like some of them now on different teams, but it uh, they uh, I really never had any problem with. It. You know, as long as there's, there's rules, they know what what's going to be, and uh, uh, I, I never had you know a, a whole lot of problems. Of course, a lot of it's picking players uh, to uh, you know guys like Walt Payton to have a, a player like that. Having a good player that is also a leader mm-hmm. and leading in the right way. Right now, if your best players are are renegades, well, like, that's when it's hard. Like Terrell Owens. Yep. Yeah. 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 Something like that, and that's I mean, they true. can be so distracting that well, it's hard to get everybody else on the same page. You know, an amazing coach. The the amount of Money that's being paid out there today, and you take this uh, this Washington Redskin Hainsworth uh, Hainsworth that can't even get in shape after signing a hundred and eighteen million dollar contract. <laughs> I mean, and he, you know, what I we would die for something like that, but that's oh, just hey, we, you know we're when, just when made a different mold. Uh, when the Ram team sold and out in Los Angeles for seven million, and they thought it was an unusual. <laughs> <laughs> Seven million. Holy cow. Coach, if you had to win one game, what quarterback that you coach would you pick to be your quarterback? Oh, gosh, that's, that, that, is, a, that is a hard one because I had, you know, I had so many great quarterbacks, you know, Hall of Famers. Right. Uh, you know, Joe Theismann could do everything. Uh, you know, he, he could run the ball, he's smart, uh, uh, had a real good arm. And actually, when I went there, they, he was always, oh, he, he was really been a backup quarterback to Billy Kilmer. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, but Joe coming out of Notre Dame and then out of the Canadian League, Joe was a great athlete. Mm-hmm. He, he, you know, a lot of people wanted their quarterbacks to be uh, another inch or two taller. But you know, if you'd uh, if if you kind of angle drop or or uh, roll out or bootleg waggle, any of that kind of stuff, uh, having putting the ball 
in Theismann's hands, you're going to be safe. I mean, right. he wasn't going to right. he wasn't going to make mistakes with it. Smart. He's got. He was had good feet. Good. You know, yeah. Good so, speed. And yeah. careful with the football. And careful with the ball. Absolutely. What I never got is the Bears, I think they drafted Vince Evans in, what, 77? 77 my year. I think yeah. you got the wrong quarterback. You, if you would have had Warren Moon on those Bear teams, I think it would have been a totally different story. Moon and Peyton, you would have, I think, had a lot more competitive team. Yeah. Uh, there was a, you're going to have to correct me here now because you're from there and, and, and kept up. I think Warren had already signed with Canada, though, hadn't he? Yeah, Warren actually came out the following year. They they won the Rose Bowl uh, with the Huskies the following year. I mean, he signed early. <laughs> he si- yeah, he did. He signed uh, with Canada, Canada with Edmonton. Before the yeah. draft is the reason he wasn't drafted earlier. Right, right, exactly. But uh, there wasn't a doubt. I don't think anybody really doubted Warren's ability. But, uh, you know, his, his availability was a, was the only thing on him. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, you know, uh, yeah, with Warren, you know, what a what a hell of an athlete, good quarterback, Hall of Famer, of course, and uh, of course, I had, I had the opportunity to play with him two years at Washington. But uh, yeah, I was thinking when when da- when David asked that question, I, I think if if I had a guy that uh, wanted to win a game, and uh, I'd uh, you know Jim Kelly kind of pops to my mind, you know, just a tough kid. Uh, well, I'll never. I mean, same way. Yeah, I same mean, way, how, right? How could you pass up Kelly, or how could you pass up Moon? Or, That's right. That's I mean, right. just hey, any of them. I'd take any of them. Boy, you know, when 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 uh, Jim was a, a rookie with you in '84 with the Gamblers, and you guys came to our house in Birmingham in the first playoff game, and we thought you we we thought you we had you at fourth and uh, twenty eight on on our six or in your four yard line, and that son of a gun pulled it out. Got yeah. the fir- got the first down. He marched him down. Got you in field goal range with about three seconds to go, and it was a Tony Fish, Tony Frisch, Tony Fro- Fritch, yeah. Frisch. Yeah, he had kind of that beer gut hanging over his <laughs> belt, and and it, it is it is one bar face mask, probably chewing a little tobacco, <laughs> and he and he hit the upright. It bounced away, and we win twenty two twenty. Coach, I don't know if you remember that one or oh, not. Oh, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, do you watch any of the Bears games uh, now or no? Well, uh, you know, down here uh, on TV, we get a whole lot of the, the Cowboys and Texans. Of course, of course. But, hey, I saw the Bears the other night. Uh, what do you think is wrong with this team? We're trying to figure it out here in Chicago. They got no O-line, Coach. Well, they're, uh, I don't know. It, it, hey, that whole deal this year, I, I, to me, it could be up for grabs. I you know, it looks to be like they have, you know, runner. They have, they have some people that can move the ball, and the Bears. I don't, know, you know, defensively it looks like they're going to come to life, and being in with uh, Minnesota and Green Bay and Detroit, uh, you know, and after you know we talked yesterday, I, I, you know, I was thinking about that that division, and uh, gosh, to me it'd be hard to pick. I think it, you know, it's up for grab. The Bears, I think, have as good a chance as anyone. I hope so. You know, of course, we we got the Green Bay and the Vikings. Uh, I, I think are a little bit, little bit better than we are. But uh, well, they are. But yeah. it, uh, I mean, their record was last year. But uh, you know, it hasn't been. Oh, I don't know. It, to me, it, it's an up for grabs division. Yep. Exactly. Hey, Coach, uh, we're up against the clock, and uh, God, we really appreciate you coming on, man. Oh, it's, God, it's been, been talking to you. Yeah, it's been it's fun uh, reminiscing a little bit, uh, talking some 77 Bear football, little Jim Owens. Hey, that's great stuff in my book. <laughs> I, don't, Brian, I don't know what the listening audience is going to think about it, but, boy, we sure to hell enjoyed hey, it. Enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Coach, we really appreciate it. All right. All right. Hey, uh, you, hey, hey, good luck. We'll talk to you soon, hopefully. Okay. okay. All right, Coach. All right. All right, that was Jack Party. Uh, what a what a what a great guy.